So with this hack, this little chap will marry a sound system, your phone, your sat nav, and your rear view cameras to form a high spec, low cost infotainment system that can hold its own against many of those found in the top end cars. Okay, so this hack is about marrying up an Android head unit. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the jargon, a head unit is the bit of your sound system that's got the knobs, the guts, and all that sort of stuff, as opposed to the wires, the speakers, and possibly this, uh, external amplifiers, subwoofers, and all those sort of things. And these ones are basically like Android tablets that are geared up towards entertainment. And the hack here is about marrying that with your phone, your sat nav, and your rear view cameras, which will give you a very high spec infotainment system that, as I said, will match many of those you find in high end cars. In fact, in my opinion, better than some of them. They come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, some of them will fit directly into the slot of your existing radio. Some of them will um, fit into that slot, but have a slide out screen, so it's a bigger screen. But some of them are bigger, uh, have bigger screens, and my one, which you'll see later on, has got a big bad boy 10 inch screen, so I've mounted the whole unit on the actual dashboard. I wanted plenty of uh, screen real estate, and we're going to take a look at mine uh, in there at the moment. Uh, mine's quite old now, it's, I've had it a couple of years, it's running Android 8, um, they're now I think it's Android 9 or Android 10. Uh, I paid about 70 quid for mine, but you know, I think they're a lot cheaper now. They're like a lot of these electronic things, they're coming down in price. Sony make them, Pioneer make them, but I bought a generic uh, Chinese one off of Wish, I think it was. Um, and they're a great bit of kit. So they genuinely come with all the bits and bobs, all the cables, the power leads, mounted brackets, that sort of thing. And also a GPS antenna. Uh, so you actually stick that to your windscreen so you get a very good uh, GPS signal for your sat nav, which is great because of course you're in a metal box and that really helps um, to have that uh, thing right on the, the windscreen where there's uh, no metal getting in the way of the signal. There's also an RCA input uh, cable for your camera. Now if you're like me, you've got more than one camera and actually I've got three, you're going to need a way of getting those two or three signals into that single uh, port and for that I used an RCA splitter. You can get these RCA splitters off of eBay, the cheapest chips are about 10 or 15 max and um, basically because I've got three cameras uh, you, I needed three inputs. So what you do is you basically put your three cameras into the input of the RCA splitter and from the output that goes into the input on your head unit. Right let's have a look at my kit in the van. All right, so there is my uh, Android head unit mounted on my dash. Nice big 10 inch display, loads of real estate there. Um, and you'll see it's great for the sat nav and the cameras, that sort of thing. Okay, it didn't, I couldn't fit it into where the radio provision was, but who cares? So uh, it's an Android tablet essentially. So you've got, you've got touch screen, you can scroll down, all these menu items you can customize, no problem there. So you've got the radio. Disappointment on this particular one is there's no RDS. So uh, let's have a look, a bit sluggish. So you've got your buttons, big buttons you can press, but you haven't got the actual names of the stations on there, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, that is the inbuilt music app. Uh, let's see what, what we've got playing on there at the moment. Let's have a look. It's a little bit sluggish and coming up. We've got Dub Pistols. Okay, now I don't know if you can hear this. So you can leave it playing while you're um, looking at other stuff, it's still live, but we want to turn it off, so let me go back to it. There you go, <laughs> a bit of dub there. Okay, so now the quality is pretty good, I think, but if you're an audio file, there are the provisions to go out into a, an external amplifier and subwoofer and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you got, uh, I've got, I kind of got three sat nav uh, applications there. There's Google Maps, uh, Sidekick Truck, and Copilot. Click on Sidekick Truck, one I'm liking at the moment. Uh, so you can navigate to, to places you want to go. There you go. Um, usual sort of stuff with, with sat nav, but of course it's a nice big real estate there. 
um, 10 inches. Let's move on. Uh, what else we got here? Phone, it's hands-free. It's, it's married to your phone, so nice big buttons. The phone rings, you can just answer it, and there you go, you've answered it. Um, obviously, you don't want to be dialing while you're driving, but big numbers there. You've got your um, contact book, all sorts of stuff there. Let's go back out of that. And because, oh, sorry, I got into settings there by mistake. Let's go back out. And because it is an Android app, sorry, an Android device, should I say, you can put on basic Android apps. So I've got my calendar on there. Uh, you can have other little basic Android things on there, but that's all I've got on there at the moment. So that's great. So let's now have a look at the um, marrying up with the cameras. Now, what the head unit does is it, when it knows that the cameras have got power to it, it switches over to look at them. Now, ordinarily, of course, the conventional thing on reversing cameras is you wire it up to your reversing light. So as soon as you select reverse, power to the camera, and in which case this unit would understand and it would switch to the camera display. I like to keep my cameras running on all the time. OK, that's what I like to do. So what I do is I've got a power uh, button uh, remote mounted on my dash. Uh, and I'll, um, as we look at this, I'll give you a little inset here. You can see how it works. So I click on the power button, on the remote button, and there we go over. There's the first camera there. That's my rear view mirror. It's got about a 90 degrees angle of a, a view, roughly the same sort of distance um, objects in the in the screen as they would be in a rear view mirror on a car. Under that, you know, you can't see it here, but I'll put it in the inset. I've got the R, uh, RCA spitter where I select my cameras, go on to number two. There you go, that's my reversing camera, a wider angle one. That's the majority of the um, type of cameras that are sold at the moment, but I think it's about 170 degrees angle or 150 degrees angle. Things seem further away than they really are, but you've got more in view, so it's ideal with, when you're reversing. But I've got a third one, which is a bumper camera, looking downwards, so if I'm reversing, trying to park up, um, I'll just make sure I don't knock in any kids or anything like that. So all jolly good. Back to my driving camera switch the power button remote on my dash and back to the head unit so there you go excellent bit of kit i mean it really is i've had my couple of years now and you know it's one of the best hacks i've done and um, for the money you get a really good bit of kit